So we, uh, we, um, yeah, the step, we went to the very end of the line, uh, six lines from the bottom. We are up to the fifth line from the bottom. The line begins with the word Shehu. And we started talking, pointing out this morning the significance of a certain expression in what we just learned before. He's explaining the, the, the function and the necessity of the tzimtzum. And he says the tzimtzum is necessary for, for the oilers, but primarily, most importantly, it's necessary for the keli. But for the tzimtzum, they could not have a surface the whole union of keli. The Ophram of Kelim could not be without the Tzimtzum. Kiyim, and the last line of that, of that last word, last, the last words, that last line, the six, line, six on the bottom, is Kiyim al the Tzimtzum Dafka. Only, rather, through the Tzimtzum Dafka. So, this expression, al the Tzimtzum Dafka, is a nuanced expression. As we explained this morning, that the tzimtzum can be understood quite simply. That we have this this uh, illustration of the of the of the nominal tzimtzum, and uh, uh, using the marshal of of someone wishing to to benefit to benefit 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 many people. Because he and he's got the resources, unlimited resources. So there are two ways that he can do it. One way is by opening, taking the walls down from the treasure. <coughs> then everybody can can run through the treasure and take whatever they want. And it's an ex- inexhaustible resource. So it's not worried that it will be. The plan uh, uh, diminished, depleted. So that's one way you can do it. Another way you can do it is keep the walls in place and open up a window. Let everyone who wants to benefit from this approach a window and uh, describe his situation and he will be given everything that he needs. Now, one may think that if the walls are down and people are just coming on their own to grab things, it would be not, not a very healthy situation because people will just lose their themselves and they will lose the sense of, of, of appropriate acquisition. They will just be up with anything that comes to their hand and they, they, without any judgment and without any accounting, without a serious approach to, to, to this resource. That's why you need a window that will con- keep it in control. But then, if we assume the other way, that these people who are approaching this are also responsible and intelligent people, and they will themselves judge what they need, what they don't need, take what they need and, and, and leave what they don't need. Why does it have to be contained, controlled from, from the above, that you're given out through the window? And yet, so the union of Tzimtzum per se means that you're giving it to the window for whatever reason, the reason that you don't want people just to go wild. But when you say, so therefore, it is just the effect 
the Simpson that people should take only that which they need, they should be controlled, they should be intelligent. When they say Simpson Dafka, that is referring, that is implying something much more than that. It's, not, it's implying that it's not a question of how, how much they take, whether they're out of, out of control or they are, or they are um, focused. Simpson Dafka means that even if they were, they were focused and they, were, and they did things in a proper way, they would not take what they don't need. That's my thing. Which one? Which call is this? Mm-hmm. My understanding. Is, <laughs> is there another one you want to turn off? The one that comes up later? Another alarm? Yeah, that's much later. Uh, okay, let's see. Yeah, but, but then I would uh, hide. Just press. I'm shutting off the, the call if I do this. No, you can go, you can go to calendar. And then on the calendar. Okay. Oh, well. Okay. All right. Okay. This is it. When it says Tsimsum Davka, means it's not just the effect of Tsimsum. The effect of Tsimsum can be accomplished different ways. That's not to be true with Tsimsum. Tsimsum is one way, but it's not an effect that this is that this is the only way you want it. When it says Tsimsum Davka, means that even if you can accomplish that controlled manner without the Tsimsum, it will not do it. It has to be the effect, the, the, the effect of symptom. That's what symptom dafka. So now, we, this is what we want to understand. What is the implication? What is the significance of the symptom dafka? That that has what result? That creates, bring, reveals the kalim. Right. That creates the kalim. Reveals the kalim. The music creation of the day, I tell you. <coughs> so who, which is, the symptom is, Bechinas Heder Ho'oyer Behagil. The Tzimtzum is, represents the aspect of heder, of withholding the oil and gilly. Not just merely that there is a lessened oil, but you're withholding it. Heder ho'il ha'gilly. Only then, yochali is his havas ha'keli. Only then they could come to the, his havas to come forth of the keli. And this is still going to be explained. The Haskolas his Havusonhu. And the starting point of the his Havus of the Kalim is Minagub Hatsimtum Atzmoy. That effectively the Kalim begin and they're in their they they're in the in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the, the, concept, the concept of Kalim, the, the first, the first definition of Kalim is from is from the Guva Tzimtzum Atzmi, is from the body, from the Tzimtzum itself. Like we said, it is not the result of the Tzimtzum. That the Tzimtzum provides for a limited and controlled flow of our Ashpur. That can happen even without the Tzimtzum. But in any case, this is the, the effect of the symptom. A symptom also means from the very experience from the symptom itself, from the very experience of the symptom. 
of the of the withdrawing and and um, and uh, and um, holding back the oil, not just not just in, in giving some kind of a of an inspiration that it should be done in a proper way, but the actual principle of holding back the head and hoi. When there is a head and hoi from that, yochel did is how was I I'm sorry. I'm sorry. As holds me, a group who adds a team from the from the very fact. And and from the very fact of the symptom again, not the result of the symptom, but the symptom itself. As it says in Chaim, but we quoted before. So what is saying at Chaim? The Indian had Tzimtzum who, that the in, the Indian of Tzimtzum is Legalois Shoyresh Hadin to reveal the source of the Mida of Din. Better throw out a light for it. <laughs> Effectively, the marshal that we that we presented, the difference between the being an open, an open, an openly accessible storage resource, or that it's been provided through a, through a window. Even though the resultant benefit could be identical, he is taking what he needs. He is given what he needs. But there is an, an important factor that when he is taking, he doesn't go to the to the to the process of deen. Whereas when it's giving, he goes to the process of deen. Sorry, I missed I missed that sentence when he's what? Mind repeating it? Yeah, I don't mind repeating it. Which sentence are you talking about? When he's when he's taking his When it's when it's an open uh, approach, an open store's house. Even if he takes only what he, he needs. There is not the aspect of deem involved. It's an open house, and he, and whatever is suitable for him, he takes. Whereas he comes it's to the window, aspect. even though he also gets everything that's suitable for, for, for him, but there is an aspect of deem, of judgment, of measure. I'm, mis I'm missing. I'm missing the word. An aspect of dean, dean, dean. Dean. Okay. Um, Kav. Dean like judgment. Dean. Oh, dean, dean. Okay. Right. Thank you. The aspect of dean.
the principle of Deen In, um, uh, to give to give us a handle on, on the principle of deen. In in the, in in the aspect of ownership. Ownership and say this is yours. And this is yours. Everybody gets what they want, what they need. That is not a full description of what of what ownership is. What is the full description of what ownership is? You have this, you don't have that. Huh? You have this, you don't have that. No. Oh. Obviously, this is yours and not his. No. Exclusively. <coughs> Now it's along with the positive of owning it, you're excluding the, the, anyone else. That's at the level of Kayun. <clears throat> this ultimately, as we shall see, provides for Kayun. No, it's this morning's class you mentioned that ownership ownership Lamila doesn't have this distinction, it's yours and not his. This, this, this level, morning this morning uh, you just very briefly introduced what's I'm, coming. I'm not Go ahead. I'm not, let's let's just mention that. I'm trying to yeah, hold, yeah, it's fine. I'm trying to hold on to this boat. Good, you're doing, you're doing fine. So, uh, so this Indian of Deen has a very, a very um, interesting uh, function. Normally, you would say. Normally, would say the important thing is to identify what's yours. What do you have? You may say no. That's not sufficient. Does does the din element of din precede kalim or vice versa? I want to be a din is a shortage of kalim. And therefore, the shortage of Simpson or Simpson? No, no, the Simpson is what provides for Dean. When we said that that Simpson provides that the Hashbor comes through a window rather than leaving it open <coughs> to, to, to the need itself, that provides for Kate. For, for, for Okay, and it's interesting that this window doesn't imply any lacking. Absolutely of not. Of resources. Not only it doesn't imply lacking, no restraint either. Because whatever whoever comes up, whatever he needs is given. No lacking and no restraint, but yet through a, a defined channel. So that shows on, on what definition? Oh. But but yes, restraint yeah. or no restraint? No, I mean, it's not res being restrained. Whatever you need, you give. You give. Oh, uh, the resource is not held back, but it's it is mediated through a particular channel. Yes. Uh -huh. <coughs> well, the one that that this is not pertinent, but uh, I'm sorry. This is not pertinent here, but the one that goes to the window. I mean, who goes to the open warehouse? He he puts the din upon himself. 
in, in, by him it comes from, from not from a din, from restraint. It goes on from the positive side. I, I need this. That which he doesn't need, he doesn't even notice. And what's that called? When he just when he takes what he needs. This is a which need is this? That's like that's chesed. When he takes what he needs. Mm-hmm. His own chesed? Not his chesed. Chesed that from from the resource. Okay. And he himself doesn't apply a media at all? Certainly, his media is not what limits what comes to him. The limit is he doesn't need it. I know we're giving these these extremely mundane uh, illustrations, and we get lost in in, in that. And eventually, we'll, we'll we'll come to understand the significance of that. Let's say the Tata says that, uh, for, for one example, the Levi. A Levi, he does not have a part in the soil, in, in the land. He was not given an inheritance. And therefore, it is a responsibility of all Eden to support the Levi. So let's leave it at that. You need support to support the lady, and then once I know and I, 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 it is a proper thing to support the lady, then I'll come out with my resources, with my good feelings, and I will support the lady. But the trader does not leave it at that. The trader says you should give the lady a tenth of the products. And if you gave him a fifth of the produce, it's not included in the mitzvah. It's a mix. And if you give him a tenth, it becomes miser. If you give him a fifth, it doesn't become miser. There are many ramifications of that. The same thing is that particularly in miser sheni, miser sheni, which becomes Kodesh, if you give a fifth, then you, you, you're nullifying the whole thing. You'll start to all over again. In other words, the, the, the restraining measure defines what, yet, what he has to give, and it also gives it gives it a defining boundary. An upper, an upper limit. Not the upper limit, the only limit. Oh, no minimum, no maximum. No just minimum, maximum. A specific number. I'm saying, if you give a fifth, it's not good. If you give, if you give a twentieth, it's not good. Okay. A precise, a precise thing. In film, we have four parshies. I want to put in ten parshies. I'll be even holier. You made the film possible.
This is the principle of Kaylee. Oil can be can be defined in general in general terms. Be kind, be good, be honest. Kalim, be honest cannot be put into a Kalim. Be kind and good cannot be put into a Kalim. Cannot be defined what, 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 what it is. How do you identify that, that phenomenon? Well, Halakha does put it in a Kali because it quantifies what is tzedakah. So. Exactly. No, that's right. I'm saying because that's, I'm saying, it quantifies. That's not being, that's not saying be good. It says you do this. Is that not the measure of goodness? No. It's a measure of a certain exact requirement. Oh, saying that the chesed per se is something different, a different quality from that action. The chesed in, in a keli has, an, has a, a, a specific definition. That's when it becomes a keli. If you have chesed on its own, kindness, then then uh, you would not have that, that solid definition of a keli. What means chesed on its own? And, and the oil ha chesed, the kindness. <clears throat> if you had the oil chesed, you would not have a defined kelly. Right. Not, not defined, that's right. Not defined. Chesed would not be defined precisely. There is no keli for, there is no keli for the term kindness. Or any of that, of that expression. Goodness, sympathy, there's no keli for that. There's no one keli or there's no keli at all? There's no keli that grasps uh, this idea. Mm-hmm. And in order to to create this type of a of an entity, it's called a keli. This kind of entity comes from the concept of a tzimtzum, from the, pre- from the principle of a tzimtzum. In other words, what do we have in Kalim? In Kalim we have, as I said before, two, two aspects. The, the yes and the no. What yes to give, but then what not to give. What yes to do and not to do. Just like I explained right in the beginning. What's ownership? What's it the true definition of ownership? That you own it and not him. That's the true definition of ownership. Because initially, everything goes to the Mavish. And when also the Mavish, the Mavish gave it to all the people. So then automatically everybody owns everything. That's not called ownership. Real ownership is when it comes out and, and it comes out into Kali. When it is yours to the exclusion of others. It's an interesting halach. This is first the beginning of the year. The halach is this is one of those things that everyone's familiar with. When the Gemara said, the Mishnah says, if you, if you walk in the street and you see Rosa Metzio and you see a lost article, this lost article 
so you, so you 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 throw you your your gum and you coat over it, proving I found it, I want it. I'm identifying it as mine. And then someone comes up and puts his hand under the gum and uh, holds on to this to this thing. For one second, who does it belong to? First guy. Huh? He holds it and lets it go? Yeah. He, he holds it for a second. And he, moves, oh, he lifts it up and puts it down. Yeah. Hmm. Left and I even just yeah. a, a one, one little tug. The man with a hand. Yeah. And he holds it. Yeah. Although, who found it? The guy with the, the first guy. He found it. It's mine. I found it. So the other kind, guy comes, he sees this guy throwing the gun. Oh, this must be a valuable thing. He goes and grabs it. What's the fairness? How does it become his? Force. Hold it. Listen. How does it become his? And what's the what's the rationale behind it? In a simple term, there are many ways of approaching it. In simple terms, look, this thing is present in the world. Who brought it into the world? God. What you know? What give it? What give it the presence? Right? It's owned by the Mavish. And the Mavish that allows everyone, he gives it to all the people in the world. So by you seeing it, you found what? You found, as if you created it, you found that which the Mavish that provided for everybody to get. In what way did you claim, did you effectively define its presence as yours to the exclusion of others. The fact that you want it, fine, of course, it's a good thing. The Emerson made it. It must be a good thing. But you know, put your cloak over it, it's not sufficient. No, no, that, that, no. It's, it, how is it, it, it's still part of the world. Nothing happened to it. It's only saying, I like it. You like it, the other guy also likes it. Or he likes it, he doesn't like it, makes it different, but it doesn't, he does not now draw it from public domain into a private domain. Where is it become a private domain? Something that is exclusively private and there's no, nobody else in it. When two people are watching, are watching the, ar the article, two people can, uh, can look at the article at the same time without interfering with each other's view at all. But no two people can hold the article without inter interfering with each other. And we said, ownership means not just I claim it. Ownership means that it, that it, there's something that has been done that, that identifies me as the owner to the exclusion of others. And it comes to the exclusion that it is only by holding on to the other. Some kind of action. Because looking at it, I said, looking at it, two people can look at it without interfering with each other at all. So I keep it's not very happy with this.
the reason the Akiva is not so very happy in heaven, in heaven is, is that he perceives ownership only to the exclusion of others. Doesn't perceive that he's actually owning something that belongs to the neighbors. In other words, ownership is only relative to others. It's not, but we are talking about that. The, the real ownership is not relative to others. Real ownership is the who the drivers to give it to. Because really it belongs to the neighbors in, 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 to start with. It's not enormous and it's not, in, 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 it's not out, of, out of the world. It's, it's not outside of the, of the, of the of the parameters of the world. It's there because it's there because it's it's part of the creation. So when you say ownership, everything that we do, everything that we do, whether it is in the moment is and and when when we, when we eat a fruit, we immediately acknowledge that that we take this fruit, the fruit from whom, from where, from the earth. Where we take this fruit from? From the neighbors. From the This is what the Torah is revealing to us, teaching us. That is the only true reality. That's why when we eat something, make a bracha. We make a bracha for it to grow in the, in the, in the, in the ground. And, and, and somebody plowed the, in the field and he so seeded it and so, what is the Ebesha coming here? elaborating on this for many reasons. For one, because this itself is an extremely extremely significant concept. For those who learn Gemara and debated these things, it's not it's not really a, a, a totally novel, even though there it's also not everybody fully understands what's going on. But otherwise, yeah, of course, he found it. By decency, it belongs to him. That is only true if we interpret ownership as a conventional principle. In other words, we don't want people to fight. We want to have peace. Therefore, we have rules of ownership. It's a convention. There is no fundamental reality to it. But if we say that ownership is an absolute truth, then you have to go back to the absolute principle. Who is the absolute owner of the world? Not the conventional owner of the world. If you want to own it from that perspective, then it has to be in, in a certain specific, precise, precise manner. Precise manner means that what what the Torah has prescribed. Yeah, the Torah describes exactly how is true ownership created. Ownership that is not conventional, only conventional, but that actually transfers ownership. Okay, 
there's much to speak about it, but I saw how this perturbed me. I just want to make sure that I should understand that we're talking about something which is in a different level of reality. Ownership not by convention, but by by the principles of reality of the existence of the world itself. And there, as I said before, it's very, you know, I'm putting it quite simply, but you, you ought to think about it. Like I said, to look at <coughs> the article, two people can look at it without interfering with one another. Therefore, each one con considers it his because he wants it. But he has not excluded anyone from it. And that's what, and therefore there is no real ownership to the inclusion of others. Only in holding to the, uh, the article is there an element of exclusion. And that's why that is where ownership is, is, the, is, um, is accomplished. This is, again, coming back to the principle of the Tzimtzum, Heder Hoir, and that is where the Kalim are created. Because what are the Kalim? Kalim are, are very precise, precise definitions. Precise means this, but, but nothing left outside. That's what Achille is. Like we said many times, you take the cup and submerge it in, in water. The cup is full of water, but you have not really identified the water that's in the cup because there's water all around. I think the reason is what in, what in the cup is because there's water all around. There is not a real a real defining factor. When you take the cup out of the water, so there's only water in the cup, not water around it, that's when you, you've defined the water in the cup. And that's the principle of our case. Use the expression nothing outside. Nothing around, hmm? nothing around it. Nothing around it or nothing outside it? I, I'm trying to catch this, uh, the, the import of that. There's nothing. There is, there is water only in the cup and not outside of it. But around it makes a difference. When the, okay. cup is in, when the cup is submerged in water, do you consider the water in the cup as being in the cup? You could, could think of it as water in the cup in a larger... In what way did the cup capture this water? I, you, I, you, I could think of it as that water demarcated within the larger... In what way is it demarcated? It's only conceptually. It's not there. On the contrary, the, the cup is in the water, not the water is in the cup. Again, we're not talking about why you can think, we can, we can make ourselves think in all kinds of different things, different things. 
and we have a world that has that's thought up of all kinds of idiotic things, and we can think of it. But what is the reality? Okay, this is, this is the muscle you presented before. That's the, how I look at it. I, it's, so, I just told you what uh, how I see it. I don't want to dwell on it, but. Uh, and after I explain to you, you're still seeing that way. Yes. You don't see the difference between the water. Yes, and of the course, cup. there's a difference. What's the difference? It's it's not, now it's isolated and, and it's on the water that's in there is not joined to any other. And water. therefore, and therefore it's not joined. So what? What's the difference? What's the, what's the fundamental difference? You know, if if you put a, a, a let's say a submarine in the in the water, it displaces a certain amount of of, of space. Similarly, the water that's in the cup inside the lake is has also measured. It has a measurement of uh, of what it can it contains. In what way does it contain that water? That's my question. That's how I see it. I, and that's right. what I'm trying to explain to you, to think about it. How, that's how you see it. We, 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 we see all kinds of different things. That's what we're learning. In what way, on the fundamental level, does the water contained in the cup? How is the water in the cup separated from the rest of, from the, rest of the lake? That's what we are laboring about. Is, is the cup totally immersed yeah. in, the, in the lake? You yeah. can't see it. It's, it's, it's on you could see it. You can see it. No, you can see it. The water is translucent. You can see it. But, but, but it's, it's, over, totally. it's, it's, it's above the rim of the cup. That's right. That's right. So, so the question is, how, how is the water separate? For, se it's not. Okay, thank you. We label all these things over and over again because sooner or later, you know, that's the whole idea. We should we should be able to see, as I said, to see things on Torah view, to see things not conventionally, which is just relative to to some other view, but absolutely. That's what the Torah is about. It wasn't clear how deep the cup was. The Torah, Apitera, is like this. A first person owns property. There's a deen that, that karka ain't an exilis. You can't rob a person of his ownership of, of real estate. You cannot, you cannot rob real estate. You cannot rob real estate. Real estate. You cannot, uh, real estate is owned by the owner, no matter who is in control of it. And for this reason, because we don't know the history of every, of every piece of land in the world, so when you go and buy an esrig, the esrig, the trader says, has to, be, has to be owned by you. And if it's robbed, then you're not here to the mitzvah, the mitzvah. And you what? You're not here to the mitzvah. So when we go down and we, when we cut an esrog off a tree, we don't know the history of this of this field. Who knows if the, if this field has transferred hands illegally from the original owner, and therefore when you cut the esrog off the tree. You're essentially taking it from a robber. You don't own it, no matter how much you pay for it. It's still owned by the original owner, mm -hmm. even if he doesn't know about it. Yes, then you're buying stolen goods. Buying stolen goods 
it, it, it is, is a different thing. These are, these are goods. These are these are metal to them. Mm -hmm. yes. They can transfer um, um, ownership, but real estate cannot transfer ownership. But here, right, no. but here you're buying the Israel, not the real estate. No, you're buying the Israel, you're cutting it from, from, from the land. But, it's, mm -hmm. the, but it's, the, it's the movable piece, it's not the land itself. Not yet. So the thing is like this, if somebody else cuts the Israel of the tree and sells it, then you can get it. That's why we don't, oh, we don't go ourselves mm -hmm. to cut it off. Oh. Otherwise, it would be associated with the land somehow. No, land. It's, you're taking it from the land. Okay, so what, what is the point in this that... Um, the point is to show that, that, that that ownership is not a conventional thing up in there. In other words, he doesn't even know that, 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 that this uh, land own, has anything to do with him. For generations, he has no sign of it. And yet, still, he still owns it. And that's demonstrating that that Lafitte Torah things are not conventional. Lafitte Torah things ownership means an absolute thought. What? Uh, what? This call that land can never be stolen. Why wouldn't that just be a? Con why could that not be a conventional arrangement? Conventionally, I, I, you could. But conventionally, you own that which you know that you own. That you're using it, that you know that you own. That's a conventional thinking. I mean, let's say you buy a house here. They investigate to see the deed and see if there's a lien on the house, and therefore it's not just what you know that you own, but they check the lineage. So that's a conventional. It seems like conventional arrangement. They check the lineage all the way back to the born moment where it's first registered in the city hall, mm -hmm. but nothing happened before that. Because that's that's the extent of their records. That's right. right. Yeah, but but that's right. But the land did not get created at the time of the record. Right, so here and here we're saying Lafitte Torah that but that, that exact same practice just goes back further. Goes back to yeah, the beginning of time. We all know what happened. Mm -hmm. but, but ownership can be transferred by means of a sale. Uh, real, yes, real, absolutely. Real estate. Huh? Real estate ownership. Yeah, it can be sold if you have a certain precise way of doing it, but yes, of course you've been friends. I guess I'm just looking at this last point here about Torah providing, let's say, a absolute view, a non-conventional view. I'm just trying to see how that fits in with what... I lost track of what, how that fits in with what came before it, or the cup in the water, or... Okay. Um, we are, we are, we are in the Rebbe is explaining that the Tzimtzum, and it only the Tzimtzum, can create the, the phenomenon of Kali. And I explained the, 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 the concept behind it. Kali means a precise definition to the exclusion of anything else. The marshal, the cup in the water, if the cup is inside the water, it's also in, in, in the water is in the cup, but it's not, it's not, it's not uh, uh, separate from the rest of the water. It's not, it's not really in the cup. Yes. Okay. Okay. And, and in order to create yeah. that type of a, of a principle, that type of a concept, a Kaylee that completely separates the Indian from, from the overall source from which it comes from. That can only happen as a result of the Tzimtzum. Okay. And, uh, that can only happen uh, as a result of what? The Tzimtzum. And fine. And how did that how did that tie in with Torah providing absolute definition? No. That, 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 that ties in with the Misholim for, all, for this thing. As I said, in a muscle, in ownership, 
that emotional ownership is not just what you own, that you own it, but only you own it and not nobody else. Now it's not just the the positive. The water, the cup in the water is the, is the water is in the cup also, but it's not separated from the other from the rest of it. That's right. That's when it's submerged. So the same thing, ownership does not mean that you own it, but others also own it. Right. To the exclusion of others. To the exclusion of others. How do you? That, that's that's the principle of a cave. Okay. Precisely that and nothing else. And why does that point to something beyond convention or worldliness? Because I give you an example. That worldly con convention is that if you see an article and you claim I saw it, it's mine. Because world convention ownership is principally for the sake of avoiding argument, of fighting. I found it first. Will you come to take it? Okay. <clears throat> and get okay, but but Torah rules that the one who puts his hand on it first becomes the owner. So I guess I'm missing why that is not just a slightly different convention. Why that's so I'll explain to you because that describes not just that he owns it and but it excludes excludes others. And why is that not worldly? That's not world because in I mean, that, that, sure it's it's done in the world, but it's not the worldly principle. Seems in a way like the most worldly. I I hold this stuff, and somebody else is prevented from using it. What's not worldly about that arrangement? Oh yeah. So I'm asking the question. You found an in, in, an article. I understand, and the other person saw it first, but I was the first to lay hands on it. So by so that, so why is that? Why did it become mine? Yeah, what is the difference between that and that? I get, I took it unto myself, or I put my hand on it. But you saw it. it, you claimed it. The first individual claimed yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And I came later and I put my hand and on put, it. Yeah, you took it. Yeah, so um, again, I, I don't get why that's not just a slightly different convention. I didn't the, see it because first, I, I handled expl it first. I explained to you. Yeah. The difference between seeing it and holding it is that you can, two people can see it without interfering with each other. Right. There's no exclusion aspect. Yeah, they both like it, they both There's see no exclusion it. aspect. Right. Holding it, if you hold it, it automatically excludes others. Right, and what's, right. what's more worldly than that? No, so no, no. The, of course, it, you put it into the world, but it's not the worldly principle. Why not? The because worldly principle is, if the whole ownership principle is that we should not fight, uh, so then, if I see it, you shouldn't. Be, don't don't come and interfere with me. Uh huh. We're saying no. It's uh, you own it to the exclusion of others. Uh, I, yes, sir. I write late, but I would like to know. This whole discussion, how is it related to... Very good question. The, 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 the Rebbe says that the Tzimtzum is, is, a, is a principal source, cause, for Kaili. Which means not only that there is a limited flow, but that, that there is an, a restraining element. For the limited flow, that's it seems. So we asked, what is necessary to have a restraining element? There is a limited flow, the limited that's sufficient. Why have to be restraining? I explained that the keli means that it identifies not only what's in it, but identifies and separates from everything else. That for this we got a whole discussion. I'm going to give it to you, to give an illustration, a handle on what is the 
The principle of exclusion. The exclusion of others is not worldly principle. I have just finished talking over here. I, I, I heard the words of this. I'll forget it. It's not important. This, this is a... Okay. The team to provides for this element. Okay, guys, listen. I try to explain. If you don't, let's go right. I know that time base is, is a little bit uh, <laughs> out of our of our realm. Okay. Not fighting is different to uh, huh? not fighting is different than to the exclusion of others. What do you think? I thought it was the same thing. Okay. <laughs> Owning it, I understood it was the fundamental thing. But <coughs> All right. Um, we'll see. I made a valiant attempt. I mean, I should have, should never go on there. It was a very good attempt. Thank you, Yitzchak. Okay, at least I'm being vindicated. All right, uh, help me. Yes, can, I, can I add? Can I add one word here, Rabbi Paltiel? Uh Yes. Go ahead. In the, in, in the world. From a lawyer. Yeah, this is from a lawyer. Okay. Yitzchak will appreciate this too. Okay. In the world, the principle of exclusion, in other words, the right to exclude, is a cardinal part of the definition of private property. And of course, this is one of the things that the progressives, quote unquote, the leftists, the communists, dispute. Right. This is exactly what they do in order to destroy any element of sense. No, no, you can't have the right to exclude. And it's not just in communist society. We see it creeping in here, too. So this right of exclusion, this is a core element. Even in, even in Lahavdal, worldly thought, a core element in what it means property, private property, ownership. If you don't have the right to exclude, you don't own property. Well, there's much, there's much to, to be discussed in, from this uh, quote that you're giving. I just don't want to go on anymore, any further. Okay. No problem. Okay. Okay. So, again, let us start from the beginning of line five from the bottom. And is there a, is there a sheet template for me? Shehu bechinas heder hoir vagil. The chintum is the aspect of heder hoir. Five lines on the bottom. You design. It's heder hoir. Heder means with withholding hoir. There's a difference between what taking what you can hold or taking what you are allowed to take and not allowed to take something else. That's a header way, that's it seems. And therefore, <coughs> only as a result of the symptom, is how was I This is what provides for the possibility that Kalim should be created. Because that is the definition of a Kali. A Kali has to define the oil in such precise fashion that it defines what it is and at the same time what it is not. Like I said way back when, you may remember, I said, what is a table? 
The table has to have two, two, two places where it is and where it is not. If this board were standing exactly the way this is, but it will go from wall to wall, it would not be a table. At best it will be a floor maybe, or a ceiling. It will not be a table. So it reminds me of the table in the little show where we learn on Sundays. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> The Hascholas has Habus on who? And therefore, the beginning where the Kalim first surface has come into being is Min Guv Hatsim Tumatsmi, is from the very essence of the Tsimtum itself. The Tsimtum provides for the, for the concept of Kalim. Shom Om On of Numbeis. Goof at Simpson at You know that the, there's the 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 story of the of the of the Tower of Babel, the Migdol that they were building. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, right? The, the middle of, of Babel, after the marble, people got together and signed they were going to build, build a tower. And how did Hashem stop this building? Confused huh? Confused he confused their language. So Rashi says, what happens to confuse their language? This guy is asking to give him to give him um, to pass down some some water, and he gives him a rock. So he gets frustrated and, hit and, and throws a rock on his head. Now, the water and the rock are both material necessary to build it and uh, to build the um, the tower. You need them both. But if I ask for water, I need water exclusively, and the rock won't do. Conceptually, they're both valid pieces. But not when it comes to precise action, to, to cave. If you want a building, you have to have, if you need water, you need water exclusively. If you give me a rock, I get frustrated, I, I throw the rock in your face. Make a joke and say, We're all happy you didn't have any rocks in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about that. <laughs> okay. The Indian had seen some more four lines on the bottom at the end of the line. The Indian had seen some more legales. Shoyrash Hadin. For the inner of the symptom is to reveal the source of the principle of Deen. Deen means a precise law, a precise judgment, not a general convention, but a precise judgment of Deen. The definition of the din is the same which you were talking all, all along before about this, this and not that. Right, that's what a din is. That's the difference between learning Shikhar and learning Gemara. In Gemara you can learn five lines in Gemara and doing the five lines you had five different ideas which way this thing should go. Shekhanolech, you have 
one halach. What's mean din? Din as in Gaius is a din. That's what it's in. Because before the Tzimtzum, okay, going back to our Moshe, that Moshe everybody uh, 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 appreciates, right? The treasure house. Yes? Yeah. You see, from the, the, uh, the, the difference treasure. between the two. The situation. treasure house, which yeah, has yeah. an abundance of, of, of resources. The window versus no wall. Abundance. Hmm. And therefore, there is not an element there. This is, pre- this is present, this is not present. There is not, there's nothing that's present because there is no such thing as not present. Chaotic? No. It's not chaotic. It's all there. So why is nothing there? What? Each. If you have an abundance of resources. There is not the concept of I have because there isn't anything that I don't have. Uh-huh. And therefore, the whole principle of Deen, Deen means I have this, first surfaced after the Tzimtzum. Before the Tzimtzum, there was no identity of what, what, what I have because there was no identity of, of not having. It's oil and soil. Okay? Oh, Baruch Hashem, look at that. Right? So the God was Shodesh Adin. Before the Tim the whole palm tree of Adin was concealed, completely concealed. Because Din means, and he said, precisely this and not this. And before that, that whole thing didn't exist. Or was not revealed. And in the Hagor over there in Eitz Chaim, it says, The Sheirish Hadin who Bechinas Hamok. Sheirish Hadin means the root of a weird Din. What's the time? No, three. Okay. Oh, wait a second. We're supposed to finish at 10 o'clock, right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let this be not Not seem to. I lost. Uh, All right. At least we. Um, <laughs> at least we. Did not throw mortar and rocks on each other. <laughs> <laughs>